After a long hiatus, The Hunger Games is finally back in theaters with The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Francis Lawrence is back to direct, and this is very much a prequel to Cornelius Snow, who mentors and develops feelings for the female District 12 tribute during the 10th annual Hunger Games. Now, this stars the likes of like Rachel Zegler, Tom Blythe, Viola Davis, Peter Dinklage, Hunter Schaefer, and for me, this was a movie that I wasn't too excited about. I thought the trailers were pretty solid, but when it overall comes to the context of the book, I'd never really been a big fan of The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, so I kind of a little bit rolled my eyes when they said they were going to actually adapt it. I was waiting for that Haymitch prequel film that I've been wanting since he was originally involved within, of course, that original trilogy and within the movies. I loved Woody Harrelson's performance there, but alongside that, I cannot deny that this movie was absolutely incredible. This is a top-tier Hunger Games movie, and I haven't been this excited about a Hunger Games film since Catching Fire. Uh, this film just really had all the essence that I really wanted it to craft, and I know it made some differences from the books, but I think everything in the end of the day really fleshed it out to be the overall better film than I could have anticipated. And I think a lot of you guys are going to be quite surprised by this. And if you are never watched The Hunger Games, this is a good way to jump in since it is a prequel movie. There's fun little nuances and fun little Easter eggs here and there, but overall, I'm very excited to talk about this movie today. And I can't wait to get your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section. So make sure to leave your thoughts down there. Hit that like and subscribe button for more. And without further ado, let's start with my pros because flat out, uh, the performances in this are, are bar none just stellar and I, I think we can all say the same thing about the original hunger games trilogy if you want to say it's a trilogy it is a trilogy to me in a way since it's just a part one and a part two but the the performances in there were great jennifer lawrence was outstanding like i mentioned woody harrelson outstanding philip seymour hoffman outstanding josh hutcherson outstanding there were some little weak links here and there such as uh liam hemsworth wasn't a big fan of gail but this film does not have a weak link whatsoever. In, in fact, every character is so damn memorable in here. To the likes of Viola Davis, who just once again proves that she is the best actress working today. Her performance as Dr. Gull is terrifying and scary and awesome, and I loved it. Like, she plays the game master, and I loved all of her little quirks and her nuance to this. And she just always embodies these roles in such a fascinating way. And the same thing goes for Peter Dinklage, who I think gave such a powerful performance as well in here. He's something that I, I think anytime he comes into a role, he always adds a little bit of gravitas. And I think within this movie, you kind of do see that gravitas, that strength to it all. And I truly enough, like while he probably has the smaller role out of everyone, it's a role that is very important to our main character. And it's one that I think adds this rounded out circle to the thematics of the entire film. So very impressed by that. The same thing goes for Jason Schwartzman, who I just think he's the host of the games and he brings such a great nuance as well that again, put a smile on my face. While it's great to see the older people, this film really does center onto a different perspective of the Hunger Games that I don't think we've seen before. And while again, it is the big tie-in of, this is a prequel to Cornelius Snow. What makes this man tick? What made this man crack and become the dictator that we see him in within the later Hunger Games movies and of course the novel. And for me, that's an interesting perspective because I've always liked Snow as a character, but I've always found that in the movies he was never portrayed as greatly. I would have liked a little bit more development of him. And I think there's countless other characters I would have liked to have been invested in a little bit more of. I would have even liked an after story. I think there's other things that you could have dove into, like such as Haymitch is a prequel that I've been wanting to see for the longest time. But this film really elevated this and showcased how interesting and how much more interesting as a character as Snow is. And I think what this movie captures is that same nuance that I felt reading the book on Snow's character itself. And I think Tom Blythe does such a phenomenal job as Cornelius Snow. Getting down the great manner mannerisms of the original actor, but at the same time making it its own character. 
And I've never really seen Blythe in too much before, but he is a standout, and I can't wait to see him in more things. Alongside Rachel Zegler, who I thought just stole the show in West Side Story. She was the best part about that entire film. For me, has become the rising star that deserves every role. I think her character, Lucy Gray, I love how, of course, I have to give a shout out to Susan Collins, who, of course, was the original writer of The Hunger Games and this book. But what she did was with the character of Lucy Gray and the way that it's now portrayed inside the movie is it's such an opposite of Katniss. Katniss was a fighter. She was not the performer, whereas Lucy Gray is very much more the performer than she is the fighter. And I have to say this right now. There is not a single other actor or actress that I think could have portrayed Lucy Gray as great as Rachel Zegler did. This is the type of performance. This is the type of role that really much feels like it was made for her to portray. Again, I, I think back at so many different things and this role is very tricky because you have to be that sense of performer, you have to be a singer, you have to do all this nuance, but at the same time you have to give those same great survival skills and Rachel Zegler just blew my mind and in a way you have to like her instantly. And we've all watched reality TV at one point in time and there's one moment where you know the Hunger Games are televised and all this stuff and people got to care for her and she got to get those donations just like we saw Katniss did and she gets them effortlessly and what I loved seeing in this was in that moment and I think what Francis Lawrence does so well and it's very risky as a director to do this is the film moves at such a brisk and fast pace to get to this point that at times I, I was like, man, I wish they would have sat here, maybe developed her a little bit more in District 12 and all this. But in reality, this is all from Snow's perspective. So as much as he's being swooned over her, the audience also has to be. And instantly you are by the time you meet her. You are like, who is this chick? Who is she? What is she going to do? And I loved how they developed all that. And two other supporting characters, uh, Hunter Schaefer, who plays Tiger Snow. I, I wish Tigress was in here a little bit more. I understand for the context of the story why they weren't, but I would have liked a little bit more of that specifically because I'm a fan of Schaefer. And Josh Rivera, I, I, I really think he plays the classmate to Snow. He's also about this breaking point, uh, just alongside all the other things that kind of go towards him. And he's such an integral part that I was really happy to see the performance he gave in here. Because I thought he was good in West Side Story for the small role we had of him, but I think this is even better. You come down to the Hunger Games movie, something that Mockingjay lacked and lost out on was the fact that it didn't have the Hunger Games. And that's really hard to write around because of the ending that Catching Fire gave and ended the games in there. But when you come down to Songbirds and Snakes, this was an interesting perspective because this is the longest Hunger Games movie yet. It's 157 minutes and I'm not going to lie. I'm exhausted. I went to this movie a little rolling my eyes and a little nervous at the runtime of this. And weirdly enough, I think it's actually one of the strongest aspects of it. I think the film actually could have maybe been 15 minutes longer. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get down to my issues. But this movie is fast. This movie launches smoothly and it just goes for it and it never really takes its time to let you breathe for a second i think a lot of that is because you are again through snow's eyes and i think francis lawrence did an amazing job directing this movie specifically in a lot of the action set pieces i got to see it in imax at the press screening and just like how great catching fire was on imax if you ever got to see that there this is the same thing none of those fun tricks like they did in there but just seeing these wide screens and how most of the game is all portrayed in that was gorgeous. And what I love about this Hunger Games specifically is how bare bones it is. It's one location, one little coliseum with some little nuances here and there, basic weaponry, and little to no prep time for these fighters. It's the beginning of the Hunger Games in a sense. And I really love how this film plays as a prequel on top of that to the Hunger Games and what they are and how they developed and who created them and how and why they were created. Whereas in the last trilogy, you kind of get the nose those nuances. So I, I liked how it fleshed out the world a bit more. And the action is very intense. Uh, and there's some things that happen in here that I, ha happen in the book and I see it happening. I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that now. And 
I loved how they just touched in on all that. I, as a Hunger Games fan, I was very pleasantly surprised by this movie and just how epic it felt in the grand scope, but also how personal it did as well. And while the first two acts are very much all about some of the stuff that we've seen before, just from a different perspective, very much more bare bones, very much more, I would actually like to say a little bit more tough to watch. I think it's because a lot of it's less stalking and hiding like the Hunger Games and Catching Fire was. And this one's more about, here's your weapons, kill each other. Which is more intense and kind of gives me that same vibe that Battle Royale did if you've ever seen that movie, which always I imagine Hunger Games is a little bit based off of. I think what the most talked about piece of this film will be, will be the final 45 minutes of the film, which is the entire third act. And I think there will be talks where some people will actually think that the film should be longer. Some people will think the film should have been split into two parts. And I don't know where I fall into this because I think maybe 15, 20 minutes would have actually helped flesh out the back half. And then I'm also at the same part where you could have split it into two. And I think there could have been a little bit more added development to all of that. But then I remember what happened with Mockingjay. And Mockingjay split it in and it always felt like we never really hit a climax in the first film. We hit it kind of early on in the second part of the second part. And it was always weirdly paced in there. Where in this film, it does feel like the climax hits at one central moment. And you could have probably ended the film there. And then it just keeps going. And it kind of feels more as an epilogue to this entire story. And I dug a lot of it, but as I'm getting to my issues, I did feel like the film felt a tad bit rushed through the back half um not to get into spoilers for people who have never gotten to the books but you kind of get a more inside look into the districts which i really love and i again wish the movie would have touched in that a bit more and then they make certain choices by the very last 15 minutes that feel a little bit dragged out and i wish there was more of a balance in between those because i didn't feel as emotional in that back moment it's really hard to talk about without getting into spoilers. I know a lot of people probably watch this, probably read the book. Gotta be safe for the people who have never read them. If I'm being honest, that is my only issue with the film. Uh, I found this film to be still incredible. I found this film to be top to bottom, just top tier to what the Hunger Games franchise should be. It has that brutalness to it. It has that incredible world building. It has phenomenal performances. And overall, this is one of my favorites in this entire series. I actually prefer this movie to the book. I know that might be blasphemy for some of you guys, that is okay. You can let me know down below. We will be doing a Hunger Games ranking this week of all the movies, so do look forward to that. But with all that said, I'm going to give the Hunger Games the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes an A-. minus. Pleasantly surprised by this one. Great action, great score, great cinematography. This is just overall a great movie that I totally completely was unwrapped with and i can't wait to hear your guys thoughts down below on this one so thanks so much again for watching this look out for that hunger games ranking coming up soon and of course until next time stay classy